Chekhov, resume heading 883, Mark 41. Back to that planet without warp speed, it'll take months, Spock! This franchise boldly went where no one had gone before. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Star Trek was way ahead of its time. Looking for more out of this world entertainment? Be sure to check out our newest magazine, Watch Mojo's 50 Most Influential Sci-Fi Shows on TV. For this list, we're examining the times that the sci-fi franchise Star Trek managed to be ahead of the curve in cultural and technological issues, to the point where they either predicted the future or else helped make it so. Engage. It's about Starfleet, about something we've always considered to be impossible. I don't understand. Number 10, Universal Translators. What's the theory behind this device? Certain universal ideas and concepts common to all intelligent life. This device instantaneously compares the frequency of brainwave patterns. These nifty gadgets are the reason that everyone in the Trek universe seems to speak English, with a few exceptions. The idea that language, one of the primary barriers between people, would be overcome in the future was definitely a forward-thinking idea, and one that has since come closer to being realized in our time. And I'll try to explain. You are all speaking Japanese. Sounds to me like you are speaking English. It's because of a device we have, a universal translator. The ability to instantly translate speech into another language is still far from reality, but current translation apps can manage around 80 different languages, which is a pretty good start for planet Earth. Did you understand a word of that? Our universal translators must be malfunctioning. Number nine, flat and big screen TVs. What you are about to see is precisely what took place on the Enterprise Bridge during the Iron Storm. In our modern world of LCD and big screen televisions, the technology of the original series especially can look antiquated. But the people of the time were used to cathode ray tube TVs, whose size and screens were small or average at best. Although big screens had been invented by the next generation era, they weren't nearly as thin or as advanced as what was seen on screen. Fast forward to today, and TVs, monitors, and even laptops are looking closer and closer to their 24th century counterparts, flat and as large as you'd like, or even curved towards the viewer. Number eight, video calling. I could have called your friend. What purpose will it serve to die? We are creatures of duty, Captain. Quite often, a starship's view screen is used for communicating via teleconference and few things in an era of landlines seemed as forward-thinking as being able to talk to someone and look at them at the same time. We do not resist you. You have 12 hours to consider your position. The original series featured this technology decades before it became viable for humans of the 20th and 21st centuries. While video calls weren't necessarily unique to Star Trek, the franchise certainly did them more memorably than most, often allowing for tense conflict without ever leaving the ship or even meeting their opponent face to face. You hand over to me all data and material regarding the project called Genesis. Genesis, what's that? Don't insult my intelligence, Kirk. Number seven, automatic doors. Any word comes through from Starfleet Command, pipe it down immediately. Communications, priority one. Many things about Star Trek impressed upon the audience that it was set in the future, and one of the simpler things was the doors. Automatic sliding doors were around in the 1960s, but they were nowhere near as prominent or widespread as they are today, where they're found in many public buildings from grocery stores to hospitals. However, the ones on Star Trek were achieved by people off-screen pulling the doors open. Despite their manual operation behind the scenes, the Enterprise's doors helped show viewers that even something as culturally ingrained as opening a door with your hands could look radically different one day. Well, I had to see it to believe it. Number six, breaking interracial taboos. I'm thinking of all the times on the Enterprise when I was scared to death. While there were actually several interracial kisses on American TV before this one, including one on Star Trek itself in the famous Mirror Universe episode, this is generally cited as the first, due to its place in pop culture. Kirk and Uhura are made to lock lips by a sadistic race of telepaths. Despite cultural taboos, the kiss caused little controversy. It has drawn some criticism since, however, given such a landmark event was achieved by forcing the characters into the act, rather than it being consensual. Regardless, it did help pave the way for better portrayals of interracial relationships in media. Number five, 
personal computers. Several decades prior to their availability in the real world, Star Trek envisioned using computers for personal, individual use. While it might seem like a no-brainer now, computers of the time were enormous while offering the computing power of a basic calculator. All you've been doing is staring at that blasted obelisk. Another calculated Vulcan risk, Doctor. Additionally, they were rare and therefore hardly useful to the common person. The computers shown on Trek were, by comparison, smaller and featured better interfaces than most people at the time could even conceive. The franchise even predicted the use of tablet computers with their portable and convenient pad devices. Everything you ever wanted to know about Earth is right there in that pad. You mean it'll teach me how to attract human females? Well, almost everything. Number four, gender identity. Gender female. That's right, just like me. Gender male. Correct. And I am gender neuter. Inadequate. Gender identity is a subject that will only generate more widespread conversation, but it was a topic and notion rarely addressed by most in 1992. Among the many times Star Trek addressed LGBTQ themes, albeit in a thinly veiled manner, was an episode of The Next Generation entitled The Outcast, when Commander Riker falls for Soren. A member of an androgynous race called the Janai, Soren breaks the mold by self-identifying as female. Her species society looks down on those with any kind of gender identity as perverse outcasts worthy of shame and forces the gendered into conversion therapy. Star Trek may not have redefined the concept of gender, but it was an early and powerful voice in the discussion. Just because we don't have gender doesn't mean we don't have conflicts. We are very strong-minded. We love a good fight. Number three, cell phones. If that structure is the source of his power, I want to know where he is when we attack it. Kirk out. Communicators on Star Trek were essentially cell phones in all but name, able to make calls from enormous distances, even from the surface of a planet to a ship in orbit, and all in a small package. Although many of the devices on this list may have helped influence real technology, communicators are confirmed to have inspired cell phones according to their inventor Martin Cooper. Star Trek even managed to predict more recent functions, since the communicators were voice activated, a feature that's only become common since smartphones have been implemented. Scotty, inform Starfleet Command. Disengage in the cells, jettison if possible. Mr. Spock, assist them. Advise and analyze. Number two, gender equality. If all your little advertisements aren't purged from our systems by the time I get back from the Gamma Quadrant, I will come to Quarks, and believe me, I will have fun. Star Trek has an excellent record of portraying strong female characters and even inspired some women to join the NASA space program to explore the final frontier in real life, including astronaut Mae Jemison. The original series featured Lieutenant Uhura, who was unquestionably the equal of the largely male bridge crew. The next generation would see three female officers in positions of power. Deep Space Nine had many strong complex characters, not the least of which was second-in-command Major, later Colonel, Kira, while Voyager proved that audiences were ready to accept a female-led series and ship, all while rarely making any reference to gender. This is Captain Catherine Janeway of the Federation Starship Voyager. To anyone within range, my ship has been seized by unknown life forms. Require any and all assistance. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Program complete. Enter when ready. Very good. something wrong? Please specify how you would like to proceed, sir. Please continue with record scan. Number one, multicultural and multiracial representation. You see, in our century, we've learned not to fear words. Star Trek was light years ahead of its contemporaries when it came to multiculturalism. Series creator Gene Roddenberry felt very passionately about depicting the future as he wanted it to be, with a vision of a more diverse and understanding tomorrow. They're the sweetest, friendliest people in the universe. 
the original series and those that followed featured a varied supporting cast, representing multiple races and cultures, while slyly commenting on race relations and socio-political topics, and gaining support from the likes of Martin Luther King Jr. It's difficult to overstate the impact watching the show had on young, non-Caucasian audiences, who could finally see themselves reflected on screen with equality and dignity. A colored captain. That's the only reason they'll ever let us in space is if they need someone to shine their shoes. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.